They'll forget the perfect sound bite that you've been trained to give. They'll forget how you farm. They will forget the pictures that you share, but they will never ever forget the way you make them feel. Because I believe from the bottom of my heart that we have incredible connections to make at the center of the plate if we choose to. It is in our best interest as agriculture to come together as one voice. What do you do? I'm a farmer. Large or small? Medium. <laughs> okay, <laughs> quit being elusive and just tell me what kind of, you corn and beans? Uh, cotton, cotton. Uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, okay. canola, peanuts. Okay. Very good. So you farm probably quite a few acres. A few. Yeah. So are we in the over a thousand or under a thousand? Over a thousand. So you are definitely a factory farmer. Oh really? I didn't know that. You are. You're industrial agriculture. And you're rich because you're driving a big truck. I'd be willing, but I can go out and find in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm right with you. <laughs> I'm still so confused from when I went to the grocery store last night because my head just hurts. I went in the produce aisle and I see organic and I see conventional. And I stare at those bag of carrots and I think about the 35 billion genes that are in each one. And I start thinking about biotechnology and it just gives me a headache. And then I go to the bread aisle and there's 75 different bagels to choose from and I just don't know what to do. And then the dietitian tells me what to do. So I buy the right brand, whole grain, it has to be the right thing. You have to do the right thing for my family, no guilt trip, right? Then I go to the meat case. Oh Lord. I think about my poor cows that have been beaten just to provide meat. I think about bloody chickens hanging on hook and I think about awful antibiotics that are being pumped into them. And then I go to the dairy case and lo and behold, it is a labeling nightmare and that dairy case and it just makes me think what on earth is wrong with this society when we can't even talk about food in a civil discussion and we break the plate anybody ever feel like that when they go to the grocery store you want to talk about leadership and agriculture and you want to talk about best business practices for the next five years, the next year, the next 10 years, it's about leadership. And leadership is not about reacting, my friends. It is about being proactive and not just responding. It's about standing up on days like today when it doesn't really matter and not waiting until the next day. I care if in two weeks, two months from now, you are doing something differently and telling your story in agriculture. Uh, the most rewarding aspect is unquestionably when I see farmers who feel like they can really connect with people who eat their food and farmers who take the opportunity to speak out, whether it's in person through shaking a hand or whether it's on social media through Facebook, because I, I really believe that's at some of the root of our issues in agriculture is that we have to do a more effective job in representing the 1.5% of the population that's on a farm. So if you want one world to grow on, it's about time that we look across the plate, that we pick up all these pieces, and we figure out what agriculture is doing wrong, because we're not perfect, my friends. And then we walk to the food side, and we connect to them as a human being, and simply say, I'd like to understand what you're interested in.